In this lesson, we're going to take a little bit of a break from code, and I want to show you the four basic layout types or design types in CSS. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about page layout. So we're looking at the four, which are static design, liquid design, adaptive design, and responsive design. Don't worry, we're going to break these down. And in this course, we're actually going to learn how to build at least a couple of these different styles. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is an example of a static design, or some people might call it a fixed pixel design or a fixed width design. All right, it's a lot of information to take in. So what does it mean? A static design, static is, is another word for it doesn't change. It's stable, it's static, it doesn't change, it's set at a particular size. So here is one of my older sites, killersites.com. And this is a site that I haven't had a time to get updated yet to update. And it is using the slightly older static based or fixed pixel design. You know, fixed pixel, static, different words that mean the same thing. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at it. You see how no matter what size the web browser is, the width of the, the, of the page from left to right across does not change, right? I shrink the browser, it doesn't change. I increase the browser size, it doesn't change. This is a fixed pixel. We set the width in pixels. Now, if you remember when we were looking at images, we're looking at setting image size in pixels. Same thing with the layout of this page. So this is a fixed pixel design. Now watch what happens. So if I bring the browser where it's actually quite narrow, like an iPhone or something, you see how the page gets cut off, right? This is the downside. This is the bad thing about fixed pixel design in that it's not very flexible in terms of the uh, screen that people are using to view your web page with. It's not ideal in most situations. Now, there's still a place for fixed pixel design. I'm going to teach you about that later on, but just understand what this is. It's an unflexible set width in terms of your web page. Let's look at another type of design. This is called a responsive design because it flows, it responds based on the size of the window. Watch how the uh, text shrinks. Even the images shrink as I shrink the size of the window. See how things are flowing and flexing and changing? So even on a phone, the site will look pretty good, right? We flex it out. You see how it expands, everything expands, even the images. Whereas on this fixed pixel design, nothing changes size. Everything is fixed, it's static, it doesn't change. So there's two basic design types that we have in modern day web design. Now, there are two others, and that's the liquid design and the adaptive design. We're gonna get into that soon, but for now, we have our responsive design, which is the most flexible. It changes, it reflows based on the size of the screen or the device that people are using. What do I mean by device? They could be surfing the web with a desktop computer, a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device. The responsive design, which we see here, where it responds and flexes and flows, this design is ideal for maximum flexibility, so it looks good on any device. Whereas the fixed pixel or the static design, really, it gives you maximum control, but the problem is it is not very flexible. So people with smaller screens or really big screens, you see all this wasted space on the sides, right? So let me go into a little bit more detail here. So here is a browser tool inside of Chrome. And this is inside the developer tool. So you click on the, the three, the menu item and you go more tools and you go to uh, developer tools or control shift I on Windows. So what you can do is you can tell Chrome to view a web page as any of these devices. So for instance here, here's killer sites being viewed as it would look like on an iPhone 6. Now it fits, but you see you would have to pinch the zoom to see what's, what the text is to really read this properly. Very difficult to read, right? Whereas we look at another site I have, Web Design Start Here, 
you see how this site here is actually very clear. This is on an iPhone 6, and this is how it would look. You can read it, no problem. You don't have to zoom, you don't have to pinch. This site here is designed in a responsive way. It uses responsive web design techniques. Let's take a look at the site. Um, this is the site in a full view. As you can see, it stretches across. There's no blank space for the most part. And watch the size of the images. Watch the size of the book. Right, as we shrink, oh, everything gets pushed down. Shrink, see, everything gets pushed down. See, everything is pushed down to fit. The book just got smaller. The top banner here shrank accordingly. The text reflowed. Even the menu collapsed. You see, we got this menu here. Now watch what happens when we expand. Now there's a little bit of a bug here, but there we go. See, see our big menu? Watch the menu across the top here, our tabs. Watch what happens. See, it disappears into this menu here. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That is a responsive design, so we can see it here in the emulator. And uh, we can actually check out a whole bunch of other devices, iPhone 4. See how it looks on iPhone 4. But if we look at the old site, the fixed pixel or the fixed width design, or the other word is the static design, you can see how in iPhone 4, it just, I have to refresh this. There we go. It just, it just doesn't look very good at all. So it's, uh, it has its limitations. That said, fixed pixel or static design does have its use depending on certain circumstances.